How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Monitor Comics, the channel where we create comics and manga. If this is your first time checking out the channel, then I want to welcome you here. Please consider checking out some of my other videos so you can learn all the ins and outs of making comics. We've talked about tons of cool topics so far like choosing comic effects, lettering your comics, and storyboarding your comics. If you didn't already know, I have all of my tutorials packaged in a nice playlist. I'll link that down below so you can reference them later. Today's video is going to be a follow up to one of my last videos. Specifically, I want to revisit the video where I discussed whether or not Western comic book artists who draw in the anime style can really consider themselves manga artists. I was thrilled to see so much engagement on that video and I tried my best to reply thoroughly to each and every one of you. You all made some very good points and so much so that I wanted to make a part 2 to that video. If you want to hear all my original thoughts and opinions on the topic, be sure to pause this video and go watch that one right now. In that video, I took the pessimistic stance, stating that I believe it was impossible for anybody not from Japan to be recognized as a legit manga creator. I said that even if I drew in the exact style manga is famous for, I would still be looked at as a comic book artist, not a mangaka. I want to clarify that I didn't want to burst anybody's bubble in that video. I just wanted to express the opportunities that could come about by keeping your doors open. By not limiting yourself to just manga, you could have your work published in Marvel, DC, Image, Dark Horse, and much much more. I want to dial it back and take the opposite stance, because like you, as a child, it was my dream to see my work become animated one day. I'll level with you. I barely watched television shows growing up. I was a heavy anime and manga fan. In all of my spare time, I would read Bleach and watch literally hundreds of different shows. My own art style is heavily influenced by manga art, so it was very hard for me to take the stance that I did in the last video. So now that we're on the same page, let's begin talking about how foreigners can be considered real manga artists. I guess the most recent example I should start with is Radiant by Tony Valente. Tony is a French artist who published his Manfra, or French comic, with a company called Ankama. Due to its success, it was picked up by a Japanese publisher by the name of Asuka Shinsha. Radiant has gone down in history as the first French manga published in Japan. Radiant eventually got licensed by Viz Media, allowing it to be translated in German, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and English. Recently, Studio Lurch, best known for Assassination Classroom, Scum's Wish, and Monster Musumi, has adapted the manga into a full anime. Tony's living proof that it is possible for people not from Japan to be considered a real mangaka. It's crazy to think someone not living in Japan could have so much success in Japan. The next recent example I can think of is Boichi, the artist behind Shonen Jump's hit series Dr. Stone. Boichi isn't actually from Japan, he was actually born and raised in South Korea. Growing up, Boichi always knew that he wanted to be a manga artist, but he started his career out drawing manhwa, or Korean comics. He published several works professionally, but eventually moved to Japan to pursue traditional manga professionally. The final example I want to mention is a personal favorite of mine. Shindo L is a professional adult manga artist, best known for his H series, Metamorphosis. If you're under the age of 18, please don't look this one up. Honestly, if you're over the age of 18, I wouldn't recommend you look this one up either, unless, you know, you like being scarred mentally. Shinduel was born in New York and spent most of his early career drawing manga-style comics and publishing them online. He gained the attention of many Japanese publishers and eventually moved to Japan to pursue manga professionally. While he did end up moving to the center of the manga industry, it's impressive to note that he found success while he was overseas in New York. Looking back at some of my earlier points, I made the argument that unless you were physically living in Japan, you couldn't really be considered a real manga artist. I want to officially take that back. Manga is just an art style of comics that happens to have origins in Japan. I'm sure there are plenty of comic artists over in the East who draw in a western style and dream of working for Marvel comics. So for this reason, I believe anybody can be considered a real manga artist. Times are changing and no country can just monopolize the industry. If you're a young artist and draw in the anime art style, it's okay to dream big of your work being animated one day. That's the dream of every artist. Just don't skip out on your studies and ignore art fundamentals. It's very easy to learn bad habits by only drawing simplified anime style illustrations. In terms of story writing, I'll stand by my point of not drawing the same generic shonen protagonist and setting your story in Japan, especially if you don't live in Japan. Don't give all your characters Japanese names for the aesthetic. Be original, but be inspired. Tell your story, not something that's already been done to death. If you're more of a growing artist and are already producing your own comics, then here are a few online publishers that encourage manga art style. Saturday AM is the first company I always recommend because I've worked with them previously. Plus Manga and Nora Caesar are also solid options if you want alternatives. While I still believe it's more beneficial to keep your options open by not limiting yourself to manga style artwork, it is entirely possible to find success with it. Anime has become way more normalized in western culture these days. I've never seen so many anime films screened in theaters. 
If anything, now's the time to capitalize on this trend. Anyways, I hope you guys got some value out of this video. If you enjoyed this discussion, please drop the video a like. Comment down below your thoughts on the matter. I try to respond to each and every one of you. I want to keep this conversation open and inclusive, so let's try and be respectful to everyone else's opinion. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. You don't want to miss out on any more of my comic making tutorials. Like always, keep creating guys. I'll see you all in the next one.